This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! I'm gay. Hey, uh... Sorry I took so long, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Blood everywhere underneath. Gummy! Detective Gumshoe, is that the Steel Samurai's push cart? Yes, sir! I found it in the open-air stage area. So that's where you went. The detective spirit that pops left with me? I thought I'd fall with my gut and go with it, sir. So, Mr. Edgeworth, is this worth anything to the case? Yes. It just might play a major role in solving this case, detective. Why is Polito overwatching Steel Samurai? <laughs> this like, is my favorite He, like, episode. moved away from the entire thing. He's just like, I'm gonna watch Steel Samurai. But something isn't right. I thought that the entire samurai family was an alabast. Where exactly in the open air stage area did you find this push cart? I found it just lying there at the edge of the stage shirt, sir. Oh? Well, let's leave that for now and examine the inside, detective. Yes, sir! Bop, bop, bop. Steel Samurai Daddy used this push cart to wheel the Iron Infant around. The Iron Infant is the Steel Samurai's and the Pink, pink Princess's kid, right? Yes, he made an appearance at the end of the stage show. Heh. It was a rather fitting ending to the whole thing. That the Steel Samurai was unwittingly forced to move the body is just unforgivable. I thought you hated Larry, though. Uh oh, someone spilled ketchup. <laughs> hmm? It's blood! How did you not see that, Gumshoe? <laughs> I didn't even bother looking inside the cart, I just took it. <laughs> this must be Mr. Cochin's blood. Which only goes to prove that Mr. Cochin's body was indeed transported by this push cart. Like, so maybe it got transported, but it's not that big of a deal. I believe you understand what this means, correct? You killed Mr. Cochin at this theater and then placed his body inside the push cart. And then... You forced the Steel Samurai to unwittingly move the body for you. I forced him to move the body into Alabast? What nonsense! Why would I bother to do such a thing? You were scheduled to make a speech in Alabast. Meaning it was difficult for you to make a stop in the ball. However, what if you moved the body to Alabast? Because it was your embassy, you could keep an eye on it and tamper with the evidence. And then you smuggled it out of Alabast. No! If I can show you how you move the body from Alabast to Babal, then I win. But you can't! The security between the two countries is incredibly tight! I'll be the one to judge whether I can or cannot prove it. And so I ask you to provide us with testimony regarding your movements after your return to Alabast. Miles Edgeworth. Have you figured it out? Do you know how the body was moved? To be honest, I have nothing to support my hypothesis at this time. However, I don't believe I've made a mistake in my logic up to this point. Which means... There is no question that can't be answered, right? The Primidu's statue was smuggled successfully through a brief flight through the air. So why shouldn't there be an answer to how the body was moved? Which means that there must be a logic flaw somewhere I can exploit. We haven't even gotten to the final to be continued yet. No. Movements in Alabast. After I returned to Alabast, I had my picture taken with the Steel Samurai shaking hands. Then just as I was about to start my speech, the Otogarasu appeared. I feared for the national treasures, so I raced back to my office. Right. That's it? Okay. Is that all? Yes, that's all. Objection! It looks like you left out a few things. Such as the murder of Damask II. Furthermore, you left out the part about meeting with me in your office! Ah, those trifling matters. I don't believe I need to speak of those things again. That was so slow. I do so hate to waste time. Then stop speaking with slow text bubbles. What?! You. Is not every life precious? <laughs> do you really need me to answer that for you? People like you cannot be allowed to wander freely through society. <laughs> then you'd better try hard, because I doubt you'll find a single contradiction. He's really full of himself, isn't he? Yes, he is. How can he be so confident at a time like this? <laughs> Come, don't be shy. Go ahead and ask whatever you'd like. Right. 
forever and ever and ever. He still has like five testimonies on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't actually remember the exact amount, but we still have a decent amount of the play. I mean, you still have him. another to be continued. Yeah, I believe apparently. so, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or it's a really long single period. So why was it only with the Steel Samurai? I thought the Pink Princess was also around. The Pink Princess was suffering from a bad hip at the time. And the doctors recommended that she rest. Wow, so you do have a soft side after all. The, the pain of a bad hip. I suppose none of you can really understand how it feels. Oh, so you tend to strain your back as well, huh? But isn't that just because you're normally all hunched over? He did need to keep up the act no matter what, I suppose. Why, though? Why couldn't he just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm old, but I'm still strong? Because he looks evil when he looks old. <laughs> so you know the people who have, like, the resting mad face? I have a resting mad face. You do not. Yeah, I do. You when look I'm just serious. like this. You don't look like you're going to kill someone. Look at this guy. I've had people at college that I think have thought otherwise. Oh, okay, well, they're Maybe. rude. Maybe it was because it's winter and I was wearing a big coat and yeah, if you're boots wearing your ski and gloves mask. and my ski mask, yeah. Yeah, if you're wearing your ski mask, of course you look like you're going to go murder someone. <sighs> ski mask is so comfy, though. It keeps the wind I'm out of your get face. One before I go back to college. Maybe get, like, a purple one or something. So yeah, something less... stylish. I have a black one, so, yeah. Yeah, you did kind of look a little... <laughs> the point of this is not to discuss my back problems or the color of my ski mask. For about 15 minutes after our handshake, I was in my office preparing for the speech. Then, just as I was about to start my speech, the Yadagorasu appeared. That Yadagorasu was just a trick that you had set up. Ha ha ha! A most amusing joke. And how do you propose that I set it up? If you really want to know, I can explain it in detail for you. You arranged the spotlights in the Rose Garden so that when you were to take the stage, the audience would see the Yadagorasu's shadow. Oh, that is an interesting tale. Sadly, it had nothing to do with me. You! What's it going to take for you to fess up to anything? Ugh. Very well then, let's move on to a different question. After the Autograssu appeared, what was the state of the Rose Garden? Everyone took refuge inside the embassy. I even helped with the effort. And then once everyone was inside, well... Feared for the national treasures, so you raced back to the office. And what happened after you returned to your office? I don't want to keep on repeating this, however. Upon my return, I had the stroke of bad luck and bumped into Mask Man. Objection. And I don't want to keep on repeating this, either. But his name was Damask, too. <laughs> Who cares what he was called? By the time he got to the Brimadu statue that he was supposed to steal, it had already been swapped for the fake. Talk about an unlucky man. Being bludgeoned to death with a fake statue. <laughs> Miss Von Karma's really letting her whip fly now. Yeah! I think the scary part is her silence while she's doing it. She must be at the limit of her patience as well. But physical attacks are meaningless here. Only evidence will suffice. Ugh! I... I can't find a single flaw in his argument. At this rate, I won't be able to prove that he's actually guilty of anything. Are we finished here? Miles Edgeworth, can you not come up with how the body was moved to Babal? Sir! Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, even after proving so much, is he going to get away with it? Nah. N nah. Next old bag's gonna come in and be like, oh, I found this. It's by <laughs> undershirt. And then for some reason it like comes And <laughs> there's blood on it. <laughs> There was it before! Is this the end? Someone else is gonna burst in, right? Yeah, someone else is gonna burst in. It appears that we made it just in time. Who are these weird- Oh boy. It would be a great honor if you would allow us to be your allies in battle. Evil Magistrate, it's time for you to pay! <laughs> Does I hope she has a voice enhancer. That way it's not like- <laughs> Wow, Pink Prince is pretty old. <laughs> That's <laughs> sort of old. <laughs> uh, she sort of she old. probably never talked during it. It's the Steel Samurai! No, you are mistaken, for I am Steel Samurai Daddy, married man of Neo Old Tokyo. And this is Pink Princess Mommy! Ew, I hate the word mommy and daddy so much. Edgy Poo! No! 
two people that I wanted to see the least. Larry! What are you two doing here? Way to show your gratitude, Edgy! We just wanted to help! Yeesh! I'm gonna get the bad guy with a single thrust of my samurai spear! <laughs> Go away! How can you be so mean to us, Edgy Poo? All three of us came to lend a hand, and this is how you treat us? Well, isn't this grand? And I see they managed to find the iron infant. D does that really matter right now? Hey! Is it just me, or does the iron infant look completely soaked? Hmm? Oh yeah! I found him in Babal, but he was in the middle of the pool! There's a pool in Babal? Yeah, there's the pool on both sides. Oh, I didn't know. Wait a second. Larry, go back to what you just said. Huh? Oh, um, it appears that we made it. Not <laughs> that far back! <laughs> Something about finding the Iron Infant in Babal. And he found it in a pool? I don't recall there being one in Babal. Same. Oh, wait. Oh, that! Well, I was in Alabas the whole time. So I have no idea how the Iron Infant wound up in Babal. I thought I'd lost him in the Rose Garden. But I guess maybe this cute kid can swim, huh? Wait, what? Larry, you lost the Iron Infant in the Rose Garden? Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. But I found him in... That's enough, Larry. The Iron Infant that Larry lost managed to move between the two countries. I knew that was gonna be stupidly... Forevermore, the Iron Infant was found being soaked in the middle of a pool. He was found soaked, not being soaked. He already was. Not a super soaker. This is what I've been looking for. It's another smuggling route between the countries. The pipes. The key to the route the Iron Infant took to travel from Alabas to Babal is the autographs of bilateral symmetry counterfeiting? <laughs> what? The Iron, the Iron Infant made money, bribed the judge, uh, bribed the people with two twenties, and walked in. <laughs> no. If you can counterfeit bilateral money, you're only getting symmetry. Yeah. That doesn't make any other sense otherwise. Oh, that's right. This, we didn't try this... any of the other options. All right, we can try the other options. We gotta try counterfeiting at least. Is it not the Autograssu? No, wait. That's Miss Yu was the Autograssu. It's very unlikely if the Autograssu is the key. In that case, how exactly did he get smuggled across country lines? Oh, excuse me. In order to move the counterfeit bills that were printed in Babal, someone must have made a secret route along which to transport oh. it all. I, it just made it sound like you <laughs> counterfeiting would get you into Babal. Oh, free money. We love money. <laughs> but wait, if there was such a route, Agent Lane and his men would have found it already during their investigation. In that case, there must be another secret smuggling route. And I must show the key to that other smuggling route. Ah, that's right. This embassy was built with bilateral symmetry in mind. Detective Gumshoe? Y yes, sir? There is a location I wish for you to examine post-haste. It is where I believe the route used to smuggle Mr. Cochin's body lies. D does something like that really exist, sir? An Me. embassy built on bilateral symmetry, meaning that this is where we need to examine. The pool. Take that. Detective Gumshoe, I would like for you to examine this location. You got it, sir! I'm back, sir! Quick. Good, now report. Sorry, but there wasn't anything there, sir. I only looked for five seconds. What? I was wrong! Why? I mean, you're close. You Is it just. Oh, the opposite side? That's dumb. Yes, sir! I'll be back before you know it! It's too late. It doesn't matter now what you do. It's all a waste of time. You will stay here with us and wait. This is Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, it's here, sir! There is a reservoir here, just like in the Rose Garden. I thought it was a gigantic sonic spring. Just as I suspected. What is it? The two sides of this embassy are mirror images of each other, which means that there is also a pool at the corresponding location on the Babalese side. Mr. Curtin's body was moved into Babal through the pool in Alabast. Avoiding the topic with a vague answer like that is unbecoming of a prosecutor. If you don't mind, I'd like to see more physical proof if you have any. The Iron Infant is positively soaked in water. Why do you think that is? It's because he was fished out of a pool, and not just any pool. It was the Babalese one. 
I think it's pretty obvious at this point which what must be true. The water reservoirs in the two country yards are connected. Oh my gosh, it's like um aquatic mine. Yes, well, yes, but completely different. But pretty similar. And where is your proof that the two sides are connected? Or like, okay, or like a manhole cover type situation. Yeah, more like that. More like that. The proof is right there before your eyes. The half-drowned iron infant. Wah. The This blasted doll! Thank you, Larry. Never would have normally. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm back. H hey. Don't tell me you guys figured everything out without me! We did, thanks to this hero of justice's son. Even if he is just a doll, he managed to help foil the villain. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor! Look, I don't want to say this, but... It's kind of unlikely that the body just happened to have passed on through to Babal. This guy's a doll and he's small, so I can believe it made it, but... He has a point. Ha! Ha ha ha! Yes, that's right. Lang. I'm glad someone here understands. Lang, be on our side! Mr. Edgeworth, are you going to next propose that a dead body can swim through a pipe? You see, Mr. Prosecutor, our chase after this man is far from over. Agent Lane? Why is he helping Mr. Alba out now? He's not. He realized a flaw in my argument and is helping to move the logic along. In which case... I should return the favor and find an answer. Okay. And another thing, Mr. Cochin's body was found in his office in Babal. So what happened to his body after it was transported to the open air stage? Hmph. <laughs> Mr. Alba had an accomplice in Babal, remember? You mean... Sheena, right? With her there, you can see how it was possible to move the body up to the office. Are you seriously claiming that she swam through the connecting pipe with the body? No, he's right! Miss Sheena would drown if she did that. Why? Because she's frail and weak? Because she's too skinny? What? That doesn't... She has an hourglass as a stomach, so... Yeah, but, like, you have to be able to swim. Maybe it's because you can't swim with Manny Cochin dead. It's like, it's like Harry Potter! When he's swimming with all the weirdos trying to touch him. The Grindelwalds or the mermaids? Yeah, the, the mermaids. And he's like trying to save Hermione and Ron. They're like oh, actually yeah. dying. It's hard to imagine that she swam through the connecting pipe. It looks like your hypothesis about how the body was moved is still only half-baked. In the end, it's all just the befuddled musings of an accusatory man. Now then, I believe you should give up and allow me passage. Because from the start, there was no feasible method of transporting the body. What? Mr. Prosecutor, recall Sheena's movements. Ugh. What was happening in the embassy around the time as Sheena was in Babal? Oh, if only there was a way to get rid of the water in the pool. Get rid of the water? Aha, that's it. Now I believe this time we really are done, right? <laughs> Unfortunately for you, it's far from over, Mr. Alba. You are a most persistent man. So are you. Are you saying that you've thought of a way to move the body through the water? Move the body through the water? That's completely unrelated to how it was done. Excuse me. The reason I say that is because there wasn't any water there at the time. What do you mean, there wasn't any water? Just what it sounds like. Tonight's events made it possible to drain the water, allowing the body to be moved. Fires. Tonight, the Yadagrasu set fire to a variety of locations in the Babalese Embassy. In order to put the fires out, much of the reservoir's water was used. Of course, when the water was used, the reservoir's water level went down. If enough water was drained, the connecting pipe would be used to transport the bo uh, transverse the border. Huh! <laughs> so what? How does he get out? The water level went down? The reservoirs were connected? Does any of this matter? You can't prove any of this. Hmph. <laughs> Pretending to be ignorant won't work with me. We both know what kind of situation we're in right now. Even in a game, there comes a critical game-changing moment. A moment in which you hit a wall that you must overcome in order to beat the game. I haven't lost yet. I found the route you used to smuggle the Mahdi, and the that route will lead to your defeat. Even if all the water was used by the firefighting effort, 
You still can't really call that a smuggling route. Hm, <laughs> I know that. Ha ha ha! I should have figured that you would notice. Hey, Mr. Alba, how deep are those pools anyway? Ha 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 ha! I'll have you know that those pools are extremely deep. And there are no ladders or footholds along the walls either. It would be difficult for Sheena to hold the body and climb out of the pool. Hm, <laughs> ladders or footholds along the walls? There was no need for such things. What do you mean? If one were to use a certain something that could go up or down in the pool at will. Oh, looks like you've got an answer already. Well, what are you waiting for, Mr. Prosecutor? Enlighten us already. The way in which Miss Sheena and the body were able to rise up to the ground level. If there was a way to control the water level, then that would be the way the water was moved. Wouldn't the autopsy would have been able to, like, tell if the body was in water? Um, I mean, if it was still wet, but you also went into, like, a burning building, so... Yeah, but, like, the, okay. This was used so that the body and Miss Sheena could move up and down in the pool. That doesn't make sense. No. Um. The leaves? The fountain spouts? Take that! Mr. Alba used the fountain spouts, in a manner of speaking. He used the fountain spouts? How so? The water level in the pools can be controlled by opening and closing the spouts. Miss Sheena and the body were lifted upward by their buoyancy in water. The fire on the Bobbly side and the firefighting effort. These were set in motion all for the sake of smuggling Mr. Cochin's body. Grrgh! Shall I show you where the final destination of my train of logic leads? First, Mr. Alba closed the fountain spouts in advance, in preparation of things to come. Then he took the push cart that was brought to the Rose Garden and pushed it along with the Iron Infant and Mr. Cochin's body into the pool. Sleeping with the fishes. At this time, Miss Sheena was busy conveniently starting the first fire in the ball. She then made for the open air stages pool to wait for the firefighting effort to begin. When the firefighters used the water in that pool, the water level went down. And by the time the fire was put out, the pipe between the two pools was exposed. Who started the second fire then? Oh, it was pure luck? This is when she pushed the push cart from Alabast into the ball. Once that was accomplished, Mr. Alba simply opened the fountain spouts once more. It wouldn't be that quick. And the water level rose up to its original level, along with Miss Sheena and the body. Which also explains why he wasn't wet. After that, Miss Sheena used the pushcart to carry the body up to the Secretariat's office. There's an elevator in the embassy after all. So you see, even with her small frame, she could have easily transported Mr. Cochin's body. And that wraps up my thorough explanation of how the body was moved. <laughs> well, ex-Ambassador Alba, what do you think? Not so untouchable without your precious extraterritorial rights to protect you, are you? I knew you could do it, Mr. Edgeworth! Way to fight back! You accuse me of moving the body across country lines. Shut up. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, you don't have what it takes to indict me. This nitty gritty? What does the old man want now? Proof, I believe is what he seeks. Yes, proof. Without any, who is to say whether or not any of what you said really happened? Sheena's coat got wet. From the ink. And then got wet from the water. And the ink stayed. And then it got caught on fire. I don't know. Can't, like, some firewood burn even though it's wet? Yeah. Okay. He wants proof? What are you going to do? What are we going to do, Mr. Edgeworth? There is no need to worry. I've had all the proof we need all along. The body wasn't the only thing to go through the pool's connecting pipe tonight. Just as Detective Gumshoe found the push cart in the open air stage area, so too did I find one other item there. And that piece of evidence is what will prove that the pools were the smuggling route. This was another thing that was smuggled over to Babal's open-air stage area. 
Um, this one might be tricky for you to figure out. Is it the key? No. No? Sheena still had that? Uh, the guitar pick. The guitar pick? It looks wet for some reason. Oh, wow, you figured that out really fast. Because no one, we haven't had a chance to use it yet. And what exactly is this? Humph. <laughs> you have no idea, do you? This little piece that I found on the Baba Lee side will be your undoing. A guitar pick? Would you care to explain how that is going to do me in, as it were? Much to your chagrin, perhaps, but this is not a guitar pick. Wh what? This is something I found at the open-air stage area, which was transported with the body. I naturally assumed that you would recognize it, since you took a photo with it, after all. But since you don't allow me to fill you in on what I found at the stage actually belongs to. What? Now I'm confused. Is it the photo that's like... So look at the photo. He took the photo with it. Did he? But I'm trying to look. Is he carrying it in his little tiny fingers, but they're no. turned sideways? Oh, is it just in the Steel Samurai? That wouldn't no. make any sense. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. They're like, look at the knife. Isn't it sad? He can't dance. Poor knife. Um... Oh, now I get it. Yeah. Okay. Let us take a good look at the murder weapon that was used to kill Manny Cochin. Guitar pick. On the handle of this knife, there is a beautifully blooming flower. It looks like a face that's going, ooh! Ooh. However, it would appear that it is missing a single petal. Now let's see what happens when we try to fit this pick in that open slot. It's a perfect fit! I assume that the petal must have fallen off of the flower during Mr. Cochin's murder. And then it was accidentally placed into the pushcart along with Mr. Cochin's body. Objection. That's an interesting story, nothing more. Humph. Oh, I assure you it's more than just a story. Because for some odd reason, this flower petal was wet when I found it. It was wet, you say? Yes, and the only place it could have gotten wet is from the open-air stage's pool. Now I ask you, how did a part of a weapon which was smuggled into the theater wind up in the open-air stage area on the Baba Lee side of the embassy? I don't think I need to waste any words explaining this, as this pedal explains it all for me. It proves that someone went from the Rose Garden's pool on through to Baba. IMPOSSIBLE! The people of Zangfa have been waiting to see you face to face, Mr. Alba. I'll tell everyone back home we'll be there real soon. You should be happy. I... Yes! Why? Why? It's a little late for, to be asking that question. You should have known from the very beginning. When you took your first life, no matter how you may plot or how you may try to cover it all up, you can never hide from your crime and what you've done. Because we're here to see to it that justice is served to people like you. You! Can't call what you've given a perfect argument! You know, I don't think this guy's going to ever admit to his, to his wrongdoings, Mr. Edgeworth. Because he values himself above all, above, all, above all else. People who can't be negotiated with are people who refuse to admit what they've lost. I don't believe those kinds of people really exist because everyone breaks eventually. You're right. In that case, I have no choice but to use all of the evidence I have. I hate, I hate it when you encounter someone who, like, just will- can never admit when they're wrong. Yeah. So annoying. I'll use it until all he- I'll use it all until he breaks under the weight of his crimes. Mr. Alba, I request that you testify once more. This really will be the end of the line. To be continued. <laughs> they had to put one in the middle of the confrontation because it's so freaking wrong. Yep. Now you can kind of see why I'm like, this case just does not need to be this long. Uh, yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next time. It's the final part. Like I said, end part free. <laughs> and now you can see how long this case is. Yeah. It was really good, though, to start. And it was good, in, it it was was good right. in until after Sheena was arrested. <laughs> like, she got arrested. I'm like, yay! It's over. Oh, wait, no. Uh, what? <laughs> 
It's like um, when you finish a good book and you're like, oh man, let's check out the epilogue, and it's just like all political stuff with the co- like with the world you're in. Oh. And you're like, this isn't really good. I or like when you story to be when done. you're like, I'm, I need like a great recipe for like double chocolate cookies. You find one yeah. online, and it's like, let me explain my, this huge backstory about how I came upon this recipe and how it my, changed my life. My, no one wants that. Who's my backstory? We want the ingredients. Literally. <laughs> I like, oh my gosh, I tried to cook tacos the other night, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be great, I'm gonna find a recipe. I had to scroll, like, five pages of, like, proud, pro, like, crazy mom that was like, my prize tacos have been such a big hit with the neighbors, and I even fed them to my relatives, and they love them. Like, okay, shut up. Nobody, Nobody wants to hear that. We just I want always, the ingredient I list and the directions. an entire jar of salsa. I'm like, I need to know more. And then, like, it's finally, like, recipe. Five things. Okay, Qu- cool. Qu- that only took Quercus like seven Al- squirrels. Quercus Alba is absolutely the guy who's like, I, this is my greatest recipe for blueberry pumpkin pie. <laughs> this is the only Ew, one. Ew, that sounds revolting. <laughs> I have fed it too many in Alabastian and they were great. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, oh tune in next time. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day and God bless. Meanwhile, Ellen's just like, what's up? <laughs> 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 At four in the morning. <laughs>